the American public, on the whole, the people who know about this are pretty, you know, they have a sympathy uh, for mothers who are raising kids and working and not going on welfare. They, they think that's an admirable thing to do. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at the issues behind the news. This week, reauthorizing welfare reform. President Clinton and a Republican-controlled Congress ushered in a new age in August 1996, ending the federal guarantee of cash assistance to single mothers receiving welfare. They passed a controversial law that encouraged welfare recipients to get jobs, it increased child care assistance, and put a time limit on welfare payments. Senior fellow Ron Haskins takes a look at the Welfare to Work program, its impact on poverty, and what changes might be in store when welfare laws are reauthorized. Ron, welfare was reformed some 14 years ago by a Democratic president, Bill Clinton, and a Republican-controlled Congress. What was the impetus for this action? Republicans thought there were a lot of people on welfare that didn't need to be in welfare. We have a hot economy. Um, there are lots of service jobs don't require a lot of skills, and people should work in those jobs. Uh, and so they made it tougher to stay on welfare, and they made it more attractive to leave and get jobs in the private sector. How did they do that? Well, they changed a whole bunch of laws that would continue Medicaid coverage. That used to be a real good reason to stay on welfare because the mom and the kids could lose their Medicaid coverage. That changed. Um, they might not be able to pay for child care. There was a lot more money for child care. And we several times increased something called the Earned Income Tax Credit, which is just a fancy way of saying if you take a low-wage job and you have children, the government will give you additional money. It's like a wage supplement. Uh, so Congress did things to make it tough to stay on welfare because of work requirements and other requirements and sanctions that mothers would get if they didn't do the right thing, and by doing all kinds of positive things to lure people off welfare. And as a result of that, the welfare rolls plummeted. But in addition to welfare rolls plummeting, the employment of low-income women skyrocketed. Ron, our welfare program was designed to help impoverished families, if not seek to lift them out of poverty. The prior program failed miserably at this. Have we fared any better since welfare was reformed? When welfare reform passed, child poverty declined very substantially. It declined rapidly. It declined to close to its highest level ever. Poverty went down quite a bit, and it is definitely because those mothers got jobs and they had earnings plus some government supplements. Any downsides to welfare since it was reformed? There are some shortcomings, and I think the most important one is that there is a group of mothers at the bottom of the distribution. We know that most of them have multiple barriers to employment, like they may have depression. They may have three or more children and they have to figure out what to do with those children while they go to work. They may have transportation problems. Now mothers, that have, and there's several other things like that, and mothers have one of those, they're usually able to overcome it. So you don't see a big drop in their, the likelihood they'll go to work. But if they have two or more of those problems, then you do see a decline in the probability of their work and an increase in the probability, and this is what's really important, that they do not have cash welfare income and they do not have earnings. Well now if you think about that a minute, where do they get their money? That's a big question. We don't know a very good answer to it, but it's, it, it's, a, it's, it's not a good thing to happen. And the number of mothers like that has doubled since welfare reform passed. Ron, let's take a look at poverty in this country. Um, what, are, what are the factors or the indicators that a family might be poor eventually? As long as we have the levels of divorce and especially non-marital births, 70% of black kids are born outside marriage, 50% of Hispanic kids, 40% of all American children, when they're born, they have a five or six times greater chance of being in poverty if they're in a single parent family, which by definition they are if it's an unwed birth. Um, and they have a, a higher probability of staying in poverty over a considerable uh, portion of time. So as long as we have that and a market problem, which is low wages, we have many, many low wage jobs and this is really, truly shocking to me. Wages at the at the bottom of the distribution, say at the 10th percentile, are almost identical to where they were three decades ago. Ron, states now get block grants or federal allotments to run their welfare programs, and this has arguably worked well. What else do we need to do? 
We need a system where the states help them get off welfare and get jobs and stay in jobs. And then when jobs are not available, it takes people, people longer to find work and more people are out of work, then they can come back and get their cash welfare benefit. If we could have a system like that that makes it, that, that has a lot of pressure for people to get off and maintains pressure on people not to come back on unless they really need it, but allows them to come back on if they're meeting all the requirements and everything, that's the kind of system we need. Ron, thank you so much for your time here today. I enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. I'm Gigi Hinton. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next week at Brookings. At Brookings is produced by the Brookings Institution. To learn more about the issues discussed on At Brookings, visit our website at brookings.edu.